Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Katherine Eggers. I'll be the moderator today. I am the manager of benchmarking at Gobi. As such, I work closely with our clients on any initiatives that involve Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Today, we're going to talk about how to use utility benchmarking as a way to drive bottom line savings in senior living. The webinar will be recorded and sent to all participants, and it will also be available for download on the Gobi website. To start off, I would like to introduce our speakers for today. First, we'll have Marla Tallheimer. She is Senior Manager at Retech Advisors. She has been a sustainability professional for over 13 years, is a lead accredited professional, and has a master's degree in sustainability and environmental management from Harvard University Extension School. Prior to her work with Retech, she was the Director of Sustainability for Brookdale Senior Living, where she got her start and became truly passionate about working in the senior living sector. Our second presenter today is Healy Lev. She is the Chief Revenue Officer at Gobi. She has more than 15 years of experience in commercial real estate across all asset classes. Healy joined Gobi in 2012 after earning her Kellogg MBA and has been an integral part of the company's success. She leads the commercial and sales team with a heavy focus on new business and client relationships, as well as human resources. And with that, I'll turn this uh, microphone over to Marla to begin the webinar. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I'm gonna start off by telling you a little bit about Retech Advisors. So we are a sustainability consulting firm. So if you may be thinking, well, what in the world is that? Um, we really strive to help facility owners and operators create better buildings that optimize costs, reduce their environmental footprint, and provide the best possible working and living environments for staff and residents. So today we're focused on uh, this topic of optimizing cost. Um, so we really want to uh, give you some ideas on what it means to benchmark and, and how you can really save some money on your operating expenses and actually improve NOI through better management of your utility usage. Um, so with that, we're just gonna get started here. So when we think about, you know, what, what is your current scenario where you are? So, you know, in senior living, and again, I'm gonna assume that most everyone attending the call is, is either in a senior living or some sort of um, uh, um, care facility. So typically, utilities are your third largest expense after labor and food. And I'm assuming, too, because it's very common that the utility bills are managed directly at the community. Um, now, I'm also assuming today we probably have people representing just one community uh, participating, which is great, as well as maybe some of you manage more than one community. Maybe you're from a corporate office and have several communities. So if you're in that corporate scenario, um, probably the bills are managed directly at the community and you aren't really involved in that. And whether you're at the community level or the corporate level, you know, typically um, I think, you know, the bills are reviewed, you know, whether you're meeting budget or not, right? So if you're meeting budget, you're good. You keep moving. You really, you know, every, you have a million things to focus on. We know that. Um, but typically, you know, utilities just doesn't sort of come up unless, you know, you really sort of, you know, have a big flag come up. So the problem with that is, is there's really no understanding if what you're paying every month is in the right vicinity, you know, because it's very, very easy for utility costs just to kind of creep up, right? Um, so is, is your monthly amount that you're paying you know, efficient? Is it the right amount that you should be paying for your type of facility or not, right? So how do you know that? So that's what we're going to tell you about today. So we talk about benchmarking, um, and then, you know, probably many of you, we, you have a lot of clinical metrics, so you're probably benchmarking in other areas. Um, but, you know, we all know this. We've heard it a million times. You can't manage what you don't measure. So just the idea of benchmarking and, and you know, checking something compared to a standard, right? Again, I, I don't think this is, the concept is new to anyone, but it might be new related to your actual, your energy efficiency or your water efficiency, right? Um, are, are you, you know, this idea of benchmarking your utility usage 
so you actually understand how your facility is performing over time. And you can see how it's performing against itself over a baseline period, as well as against peers. You know, where do you fall in efficiency uh, compared to your peers? I don't think anyone on this webinar would want to be um, underperforming from their peers, right? So being able to benchmark gives you an idea of where you are on that scale. Oops, we went too far, so we go back one. Um, so the idea that I'm gonna tell you about is um, this idea of an energy performance rating. So you know when you go to buy a new car, um, you have that sticker on the window. And it's obvious whether, you know, if, if um, the miles per gallon, we all understand it. And if you're looking at a Prius, it's gonna be a very, very different number than if you're looking at like a, say a large SUV, right? Um, but let's just say if you're looking at, a, you've got two cars that you really like, and you know, one is a Hyundai and one is a Toyota, right? They're similar, um, you like both of them very much. Well, if one of those has better uh, fuel efficiency than the other, you know, you, that just might sway you to buy that particular vehicle, right? It's giving you consumer information. Um, and, and maybe, you know, maybe that is meaningful to you, maybe it's not, but at least it gives you information to help make your decision, right? So when we're looking at facilities or buildings and we say, okay, well, your building is 90 kBTU per square foot per year, you know, what is that? You know, if that's the efficiency rating, that, that, that's not meaningful. Right, you can't really wrap your brain around, is that good, is that bad, I don't know. So the beauty of what this tool does that we're getting ready to tell you about is it actually creates an energy performance rating on a scale of one to 100 that you, it essentially acts like that miles per gallon rating, which is extremely helpful for you to be able to understand um, the efficiency of a building, much less, you know, puts buildings of all different sizes on a level playing field. So Energy Star Portfolio Manager is, is the tool that we're getting ready to introduce you to here. So this is a free interactive tool from our friends at the EPA. And everybody, I'm going to assume that everybody is familiar with Energy Star in general, right? If you go to buy a dishwasher or a washing machine, uh, you know, you see that sticker that says whether it's an Energy Star model or not. And, and there's just many other things that have that Energy Star label. And again, that gives you information and you automatically know that, that any product that has that Energy Star label is gonna be more efficient, right? It's the mark of efficiency and it's one of the most recognized brands actually in the country. So buildings can also become Energy Star rated, right? So that's what we're talking about here. So what this tool does, it's called Portfolio Manager, and you put in some information and it actually normalizes the information so you can see this metric um, and the score that you can use across your portfolio. Now, if you're a single asset you know, person and you're, you're just uh, representing your one community, uh, knowing where you are on that scale from one to 100 gives you a lot of information. Okay, you know, you're efficient, you know, you're in a good spot, you can you know, focus areas on other things. If you're inefficient, you may want to start uh, incorporating some things into your capital plan and doing some small things that you can do because you know that you've got some work to do to reduce your cost. If you have more than one um, community or facility, you can look at them all on the same playing field, right? One may be very large, one can be very small, but because of what the tool does for you, you can look at them all with these scores and you can say, okay, these are efficient, I'm going to focus my capital where we have less efficient facilities. So it really gives you important information to help you better manage your portfolio. Um, you'll see here, and you'll get a copy of these slides at the end of the presentation, so, uh, or you can also Google this, but um, I put a link here to the Energy Star Portfolio Manager Benchmarking Starter Kit, because that's really gonna uh, provide just a ton of information and get you started uh, on you know, where you can find the tool and the training and that sort of thing. So, um, that's where you can go to find the information. What it's going to tell you to do, and really, uh, this is pretty simple, all right? Um, you need 12 months of energy bills. So from that, you're going to enter usage, 
Um, and, and it's also very good to enter the cost information as well, because that's going to become also important to help you really understand, you know, where you are as far as your cost. Um, but then you put in some different information and that we call, you know, uh, space attributes. So what you're just going to tell the tool a little bit about the space. Now, the assumption that I'm making here today is that um, the classification that everyone would use would be senior care facility. Um, there, there's many other classifications in the tool for office buildings, um, churches, you know, all kinds of, of space types. But if you're going to enter a senior care community, uh, these are the types of things that you're going to enter. Again, it's pretty basic stuff. And once you enter it once, you know, you're good to go unless you have like a major um, renovation or a major change to your facility. But just things like square footage. Um, your occupancy information, how many refrigerators and freezers, your average number of workers, average number of computers, and whether the whole building's heated and cooled. Um, and so then the tool is going to take that information and normalize it um, based on weather, hours of operation, what it, what it, and based on that space information that it's telling, uh, that you've told it. And from that, it's going to create that score. So as I mentioned, it's a score from one to a hundred. One is is not good <laughs> and 100 is perfect so your target zone is 75 to 100 and if you reach that target zone you actually uh, could have the ability to have that information verified and you could have your facility energy star certified so you can see in the slide here i have that little you know image uh you know just like i was talking about a few minutes ago if you you know that that Energy Star logo is the market efficiency. So if you're able to get your facility Energy Star certified, you could put that nice little cling that looks like that on your uh, front glass as people walk in the door, and you don't have to say a word, but what, you're, you're just sending that signal to every prospect, every family member, uh, every staff member that walks through that door that that facility is ran well, um, and it's uh, financially responsible, and that you are managing your energy well, right? So it's a great message. You can use it even as a marketing tool. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. But now, if you're scoring, uh, so 50 straight up is average. Again, easy to remember, 50 is average. So between 50 and 75, um, you know, you're trying to get into that 75 and above zone. So there's probably some things that you can do that are low cost and behavioral changes and, and things that, you know, you could probably do to get yourself over that finish line pretty easily. Once you start getting below 50, there's probably going to be some capital investment that you're going to need to do. Um, and these aren't hard and fast, but they're just kind of guidelines to give you an idea. So again, if you have, say you have five facilities, three of them are scoring above 75, that's awesome. And, and there's always, you know, energy to be saved, right? Until you get to, to zero energy, right? Um, but if you're in that target zone, what you can do is focus limited capital on those other two buildings, say, that might be scoring, you know, a 40 and a 20, right? You know you need to look at those, particularly that 20, and start thinking about what your capital plan needs to be to get that building into shape. So, again, it gives you powerful information to manage your facility better. All right, so now that you know your score and say it is a 40, you know, what do you do to improve your score? Well, to improve your score and just move right on up that scale, you really just need to um, choose less energy, right? And of course, the easiest thing to do is to look and see where you have, can find some no-cost measures, right? And so if you've never taken the time to look at this before, you could have a lot of savings potential. So what I mean by that is there's just little things that happen and these things happen so easily, and particularly in, in, in the senior living environment, um, with so many things that you have to focus on, it's just super simple for things like this to just, you know, happen and, you know, nobody notices, right? So an easy one, it happens all the time, are the parking lot lights burning 24-7? You know, your timers went out and it never got fixed, and you don't see those lights burning in the daytime, right, because the sun is out. But if you look up in your parking lot, lo and behold, like those lights could be burning. And that is such a waste, right? So we want to get those to where those lights are being turned off during the day. Common area rooms, you know, exercise rooms. If no one is in that room, 
you know, why is it lit up? Um, and same, especially overnight, you know, what things are running at night that don't need to be? Um, I knew of a, a senior living facility that, and this is not energy, it's water, but all the same things apply for water. So um, the, they had that little ice cream stream of water, right, that runs, and, and forgive me for not knowing exactly the right terminology, but they just kept that running 24-7. And um, through a water audit, we learned that 10% of their water cost was just due to that ice cream scoop running water, continuously running water, right? So things do not need to run 24-7, many things. And, and that, of course, should have to be said, but just to make sure, you know, obviously we're not talking about here things, anything that jeopardizes safety, right? That's a given. Uh, it's just things that are wasting. So you want to get rid of those wasters, and you will find that getting rid of those wasters will improve your score over time. Then there's a lot of low-cost measures you can do, things like putting in occupancy sensors, particularly in your common area rooms. I know those uh, are a little sensitive in, in resident rooms, but your common area rooms, particularly anywhere where staff is and storage closets and mechanical rooms, those rooms probably have lights that burn 24-7. And those are the types of rooms that you could put occupancy sensors in. They're very low cost, and that can help really save you a lot of money, as well as something as simple as replacing incandescent light bulbs with LEDs. Now, the next, as you see, the very next bullet I have under capital measures is what I'm talking about as a full retrofit. That costs a little bit more to do all your ceiling lights, but it's actually a pretty low cost measure because you may have decorative lighting, you know, even table lamps. We find that a lot of times, even if you have efficient overhead lighting, for some reason, the decorative lamps still get a lot of the old incandescent bulbs in them and they burn a lot of hours. So just have your maintenance tech pay attention to those things and make sure that, that you have no incandescent bulbs um, in any of your decorative lighting. And again, that's a very low cost thing to change out and, and it saves a lot of money, particularly with the hours that those things burn. Um, and then of course, capital measures, as I said, LED retrofits often have a really good ROI and probably a lot of you have done these already. They're kind of no-brainers. Um, and particularly the other bonus for them is the residents who love LED lights. Um, it's nice and bright for them, and they just love it. Um, one last thought on this is just when you are spending capital dollars, you don't necessarily, you know, I'm not suggesting here that, you know, you have a low score, so you have to go out and spend a whole lot of capital. Um, what you want to do is just spend wisely and plan wisely. And when you are spending uh, capital on that particular facility, say it's time to replace the HVAC system or maybe your P-tax or whatever, you know, those items could be, you want to spend your capital wisely, of course. So there's a, still a lot of um, uh, incentive money out there available. So have whoever does your, your um, if it's your maintenance technician who's the one that's responsible for replacing that HVAC system or you or whoever it is, make sure that you're working with your vendor and you're asking the vendor questions to make sure that you're not just saying replace like for like. If you replace, if you just tell the vendor you want to place like for like, that's all you'll get, right? If you tell that vendor I want pricing for like for like and for more efficient, I want to see both. Maybe even ask for a good, better, best scenario. Because what I've seen several times is with all this incentive money that's out there, you can get a more efficient unit in, and with the rebate checks or the incentives um, that you'll get from that, you'll spend less on that more efficient unit than you would have spent just replacing a like for like. So just talking about asking a few questions from your vendor, and then you can make a, a wise choice on you know, which unit you want to spend. Uh, your, your very limited capital on, right? So it's all about spending smarter. Okay, so just to give you an example, uh, and this is very, very basic, but on average, what I found is uh, the average cost for your average size senior living community is about $100,000 per year um, for utilities. So let's just say if you could target a 5% savings, what does that look like? Again, this is all just sort of using uh, you know, very generalized, but a 5% savings is easy, right? It's $5,000. So, um, and, and a 5% savings is not 
out of the question, right? Depending on sort of if you've done anything yet already. You could definitely get 5% over 12 months just by paying attention to things and sort of implementing the things that I just told you about. You could definitely get 5% over two years with just a little bit of focus. It's not hard to do. Um, Say if you have five communities and say if your annual cost is $500,000, that's $25,000 in savings. Uh, and of course, if you have 50 communities, 5 million and 250,000. So again, it just gives you a sense of, you know, well, if we could target, you know, some savings, what would that look like? And, you know, any, any as you know, anything that you save in your operating costs does help your NOI, which I know everybody uh, loves to have any help they can get on their NOI, is that right? So one thing we want to make sure you know about if you don't already and not knowing exactly where everybody's dialing in from, um, you, you might already have experienced this. Um, there are several state, well, cities, major cities, major markets, um, a couple of counties, and definitely the entire state of California. But you can kind of see by this map, um, there are mandatory benchmarking and disclosure requirements. And this is a uh, trend that's growing. And Huey's gonna talk a little bit more about this in just a minute too. Um, and I have the, but there's 17 major cities. I actually think it's a little bit more than that now. Um, but what they're doing is they're requiring you to benchmark and do exactly what we've just been talking about. And, um, and you have to report that information to the city or the state or whatever the jurisdiction is. And then they're actually making those scores public, publicly available to people. So if you find yourself in that scenario and you've gotten a notice and you weren't even sure what it meant or what to do with it, this is what it is, right? And you definitely want to pay attention to this because first of all, if you don't comply, you're going to be fined and nobody wants that. And second of all, again, these, these scores are made publicly available. So, you know, again, it, you know, compared to your peers, you know, you don't want to be that, that community or that, that uh, facility that's scoring a 10 you know, and not even really paying attention to it, and yet that's public information, right? So um, if you find yourself in this scenario, you may want to reach out for help to make sure that you've, you know, got the information and that you're benchmarking appropriately and that you're in compliance. And this is also, so whether you have to do it or you want to do it, there's just so much good that can come out of the benchmarking activities. And um, we've, I've done this several different times throughout my career, and it just is a really successful way to do it. You're going to save more energy, and it just makes it more fun. You can use this as an engagement opportunity uh, because you can get both staff and residents to work together and um, to help each other, like, you know, find ways to, to you know, not waste energy or water. And, you know, residents don't call this sustainability. Residents don't like to be wasteful in general. So I found many, many residents. Um, I used to have a resident uh, at my time at Brookdale that would call me about every week and tell me all of the ways that we could be saving energy in his community. And it was just so awesome. Um, you know, just I, he was really on it. And you know you've got those residents, right? They don't want to be wasteful and they want to help. And, you know, if you get them engaged and it gives them purpose and it's just really a fun thing that you can do and, and just make this, you know, part of your, um, you know, part of your engagement strategy. Um, if you have more than one community, again, if you have several that you're working with, you could have a challenge between communities who can save the most energy, you know, who can improve their energy star score the most. Um, this concept of a kilowatt crackdown, it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And you can, you can Google kilowatt crackdown and see what some other, um, you know, challenges have, have and what other contests have been done out there. And once you do this and you start saving energy, there's really a great story that can be told from this. There's great social media opportunities to put out there related to this. You know, we saved this and, you know, we saved 2% on our energy savings or, you know, we put in LED lights and saved, you know, 3%, you know, whatever. Um, there's just a lot of fun engagement that you can do, social media. You could, you could put information on your website even once you start, you know, doing some things around this. And I say here, use as a recruiting tool. I know the challenges you're having with your workforce. If you're wanting to attract millennials, um, if you don't have anything about the environment, I mean, they're, they care about that, right? And if you want to attract, you know, best and brightest millennials, 
do an environmental initiative and put it out there on your website and they will be attracted to that. They love that. It's a definite market opportunity and it can definitely give you a competitive advantage, particularly if you get that Energy Star certification. You're scoring above 75 and, you know, get that um, uh, facility. You, all, it's, it's not hard to do. A professional engineer will come verify all your information stamp it for you and send it off to Energy Star and in just a few weeks you'll get your, your uh, congratulations and your kit that will give you everything you need to need uh, to have for that Energy Star certification, which is really something to celebrate. And again, particularly if you've had engagement around the effort, you can all celebrate together and make it a big thing. So it's really something that can turn out to be a positive. You save money, um, you know, you engage people, you get the certification, you have some good marketing, and again, you're sending that very positive message to everybody that walks through your door. Um, and this is just one last thing I wanted to show you. So Five Star Senior Living, they've embraced this for a while now, and they have a, a, a you know, a larger program, and they do this as part of their larger program. But just to give you an idea, again, they, they, they've really taken this, um, and this is just a fun, um, you know, infographic that you can get on their website. They have, they call it their Green Stars program. Um, again, just to give you an idea of the possibilities, you know, if you start small, if you start small by benchmarking and, and it starts to really be something that your residents and staff care about, you can really grow this program into something a little bit bigger um, and, you know, do fun things like this infographic. And just the last thing that I'll say is, uh, Saving money is hugely important for all of you. I totally get that. Um, but saving energy, saving water, even reducing waste, you know, the residents care about it, their families care about it. Um, your staff, met, you know, obviously not everybody does, but the majority of people do. And it's not just about saving money, it really is the right thing to do. So hopefully we've given you some um, good ideas about what benchmarking is. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Healy who is going to tell you a little bit more about something you can do if you want to take it to the next step. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marla. That was excellent information. And um, I have to say, so Marla has been an industry peer and friend of mine for a long time, and I really appreciate her fresh perspective because um, she's fairly new to Retech, so fairly new to the consulting side of things, but has such a depth and experience on the client side. So I feel like you're kind of at that perfect timing where you're hot off the client side, you're super intimate and have all this amazing knowledge, but now you have the ability via Retech and their amazing platform to really help um, other folks outside of just, you know, the organizations that you came from. So um, excited to, to partner up with you on this webinar and generally speaking. So... Um, <clears throat> Uh, a super quick bit about Gobi. So we are also um, a consulting firm, but more importantly, we are an uh, enterprise data management firm. So what that means is where a firm like Retech and Marla might work on strategy and programs and that type of thing, um, we're going to help with the tactical execution of that via our software product, which helps with data acquisition, validation, um, getting the data to the right places, and integrating with systems like Energy Star. So I'm going to start off by talking about um, the challenges that you got, that might resonate with the audience on this call. Um, so starting at the at the facility or the community level. So um, the operators at the facility or the community level or the the facility maintenance technicians have a couple things on their mind. So just data collection, so the ability to collect um, utility data, having access to historical data, being able to make sure it's accurate, and um, getting kind of a, a full picture. And then also just within the, the personnel that work at the communities, so a lot of folks have been there for a long time and feel that they know the building really well, and um, either they're either they've already done a lot of things and had a lot of wins, so they're always looking to raise the bar, or, um, you know, Maybe they haven't quite yet, which is where a program like this could come into play. So then, um, that's kind of at the what you focus on. Then you're looking at the portfolio level. So now you're talking about the folks at corporate, perhaps the C-suite, who want to get some insights into all of the communities. So not just um, perhaps one community at a time, or perhaps they want to look at the, the top performers versus the bottom performers, the ones that are, um, you know, guzzling energy to, to Marla's example, and for reasons that could be easily fixed. Um, but they need to make sense of it. So if you think about um, 
you know, hundreds of properties, even some thousands of properties, how do you look at that data in a meaningful way um, and make actionable decisions on it rather than spending all of your time trying to acquire and compile and make sense of the information? Then, of course, um, Marla talked a bit about the, the local benchmarking ordinances and you want to make sure you're in compliance. So some of these things, although they are very much grassroots and they're started by local municipalities who kind of want to do the right thing, that leverage Energy Star as the platform of choice, um, some of them have teeth in them. So some of them you can legitimately get fines. Um, I know the city of Denver is one that I was talking about with uh, someone on my team that the day after, if you're not, if you haven't submitted your benchmarking ordinance information, you'll get a fine. Um, we have another client here in Chicago who got um, a court date, like an actual court date, because they hadn't reported for several years back and were delinquent and was, were also facing some fines. So the city is not doing it, the cities are not doing it for the most part to be Big Brother or to be a pain um, or to publicly shame anyone. I, I do strongly believe that the heart's in the right place, that they're just trying to drive this policy to make people aware um, and and to make them change change the behavior quite frankly so again so at the portfolio level you want to make sure you're covered for all these standpoint of all these ordinances as marla mentioned you know um so i've been at gobi for about six years when i started it was only a handful maybe 10. i believe now it's up to 25 and it's not just city by city it's for example the entire province of ontario the entire state of california so um these things are coming and and they have teeth and they have um their grassroots efforts, so it's not anything that's federal, you know, if the EPA were to, God forbid, go poof. Um, it, these are things that were set at the at the city and municipal level, and they're going to be around. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all the points I want to make on there. And then, of course, yeah, just visibility into the portfolio. Um, you can make smart decisions and even just recognize and reward the operators and the facility maintenance technicians that are doing a good job. Um, amongst their peers. So how can we help? So I mentioned that we are kind of the tactical software um, enterprise data management layer. So data right now exists in silos. So maybe it's in a spreadsheet on someone's computer, maybe it's on a bunch of utility bills in a drawer, maybe it's um, maybe the utility bills have at least been scanned but they're on a server. Um, so it's hard for for someone at corporate say to make sense of all of it or to get a good history or if someone leaves um, the organization, you know, where does that data reside? Um, or if their laptop gets run over by a bus or their file cabinet, um, someone loses the key and they can't get into all those bills they've been stashing away for 10 years. So what we do is we acquire all of that data. It's um, through an electronic process. We, uh, we direct connect through an API connection with the utilities, pulling that information into the Gobi software. Once it's inside the Gobi platform, it's validated. So it's checked, um, you know, July of last year, to July of this year, if your energy usage went up 37% in the same month, once normalized for weather and occupancy, why is that? You know, there might be a problem that you need to look into. So QA is going to kick out some outliers. And then once all of that utility information, energy, water, waste data is organized and validated in our system, the outputs are pretty easy. So um, the focus of today certainly is Energy Star um, for purposes of benchmarking and also just awards and accolades and recognition. But as you take your sustainability program to the next level, um, there's all sorts of an alphabet soup of certifications and accolades that you can earn. Um, and some of them are, all of them are voluntary except for the city ordinance benchmarking, but it kind of goes along with the maturity of your sustainability program. But again, for purposes of today, we're starting pretty simple with Energy Star, but most of these certifications um, up here, they all kind of go back to a lot of similar data. So they all have their own flavor, certainly, but they all, once you, everything originates from the data off of the bills, energy, water, waste bills specifically, um, and then basic building attributes like occupancy and square footage and space types and that type of thing. Um, so there's a, there's a significant overlap uh, between them once you have a good mechanism for collecting bills, validating them on an ongoing basis. Um, Okay, so shameless plug for Gobi. We are recognized by the US EPA as an Energy Star Partner of the Year Sustained Excellence um, for many years in a row now. And, um, you know, something just sentimental for me, we definitely don't take for granted. We tried for many years to get it, and now we're super honored to have this recognition from the EPA um, by way of the quality and volume of Energy Star projects that we do. Um, so this is just some metrics on what Gobi has done over the past year. We are set to fully exceed these targets this year, so we're really a top provider 
um, by volume and quality in Energy Star and benchmarking submissions, um, and certainly in geography. So we're based in Chicago, but we have 6,500 properties in 51 countries. Um, so we're we're pretty widely dispersed and teed up well to be successful in in many geographies. Um, and then Marla talked a, a bit more about this in great depth, but um, in broader strokes, what you're really trying to do with this, aside from compliance and avoiding fines and court dates and things like that, um, you want to identify opportunities to improve, you want to measure your improvements, and then all at the end of the day to drive NOI, increase the asset value, um, and increase the value of your organization. Um, so again, this is just by, again, some numbers that we've seen, yellow being city benchmarking, blue being actually Energy Star Awards, and this is just within GOBI. Um, so you can see the trend is definitely on the upward swing. It goes up every year, um, and it's, we, we expect to see that trend continue. Um, and at this point, it's not dependent, again, on, you know, not to get all political on a daytime webinar, but it's not dependent upon what's happening with the federal government. This, this, there are people that believe in this um, locally, at the state, at the municipality level, and there's other people even on the private side and the ownership side that say, you know what, we're going to do this anyways. This is important to us, it's important to our organization, um, so we truly believe it's around to stay. So I kind of blasted through that. There's a lot more that we could talk about, and certainly Marla or I are happy to talk with anyone offline um, following this webinar. And I think we do have a couple questions that came in um, from the, the listening audience, so we'll we'll take those. Yes. So the first question is, how do I know if my facilities are required to benchmark? Okay, great. Um, Marla, I'll, I'll quickly take that one, and if you have something to add, of course, feel free. So Marla had flashed up, let me see if I could get it back up here, the map. So first thing you can do, oh, you got it, okay. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Chris. So first thing, you can certainly go to IMT or buildinggrading.org and see this map. Um, the other thing is you'll get notices mailed to the property. So for the most part, I think they go by tax ID and you'll actually get a notice mailed to the property. So it, it would be hard to not know that your facility is uh, required to benchmark, but um, for the li folks listening now, have a look at the map and just know that, you know, for example, if you're in the state of California and you're, there's also some square footage thresholds and whatnot, like 50,000 square feet, things like that. Um, and also if you're, if you're not sure, one thing that we do for our clients is you're welcome to send us a building list. All we need is address, location, um, we can sign an NDA if that's confidential information, and we'll run it through our system and basically output a report and say, okay, of the 97 properties you sent us, these 35 are required to report. Here are the deadlines, um, and that's something that no charge will just help you kind of determine that. So I hope that answers that question. Marla, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's uh, that's good. You covered it. But just to reiterate that the website where you'll find this map is called buildingrating.org. Um, so there's definitely a lot of helpful information there, and uh, that's a really generous offer, Healy, for you know anybody that's that uh, needs some assistance. Where it can get tricky again, if, if back to that, you know whether you're representing one facility or uh, several. If you're in a corporate office and you have several facilities under you, it can be a little more tricky because um, you know that notice probably went directly to the facility. And they didn't know what to do with it. So, you know, did they comply? Did they not? So, you know, if you are, you know, more from that top side, um, it would be good for, you know, what cities and what locations you do have in these areas. So you can make sure that, you know, either verify with them that they did comply or make sure they know they have to. And again, you can reach out to, to Gobi or to, to uh, me at Retech, and any of us can help you to make sure that we put you in the right direction to get compliant. compliant. Okay, next question we have here is somebody that oversees 12 facilities nationwide and wondering where, how to start? Good question. <clears throat> call Marla, call Healy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, no, so I mean, how to start, I think, that's kind of the, the purpose of what we went through in this webinar. It's you, you kind of start with the benchmarking, whether it's mandatory or not. Get a baseline, kind of get an idea. Even if you have 12 facilities, which doesn't sound like a ton, figure out where they rank. And then once you figure out where they rank, figure out which ones are performing well. Then figure out why they're performing well. 
and try to disseminate those best practices across the portfolio. And those are things, you know, those are again in broad strokes the steps that you can take. Perhaps you don't have the bandwidth to do that in house, perhaps you do. Um, and that's where Retech and Gobi can come in and help with kind of any level or appetite or budget to say, hey, we want to do, um, you know, an initiative or strategy, but this is our budget. How can you guys help us and how can we help ourselves? Um, Marla, do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I would just uh, um, agree with all of that. And and I know it's challenging, you know, with, with, again, with so many things that you have to focus on. And you think, well, you know, do I have somebody to do this? You know, it's good if you have, you know, if you have anybody, again, at your corporate office that has the bandwidth to um, take it on, either just just to supervise it or or even, you know, again, to be the, the ones that, you know, can get the energy bills and, and can start with the benchmarking. Um, again, it's a great place to start. It's, it's definitely, you know, when we're guiding clients, um, it really is kind of the basis. And then once you sort of know where you are, then you can plan, um, think through it strategically as to sort of where you want to go from there. And, you know, as, as Healy said, that's what we do all day long. So you can call, call you know, call either one of us. We're happy to help you and, and um, take you through this and, you know, make sure that, um, first of all, make sure that you have the resources you need, again, if you just want to get started. But if you want to think about, well, what, you know, if you want to develop more of a strategic plan, um, if you really want to do the right thing and, and you know, uh, maybe come up with a three-year plan, maybe have a couple of audits, you know, do your, um, facility, um, uh, you know, do the benchmarking in an automated way that, that Healy was just telling you about, so you don't have to burden, you know, the on-site people. I mean, there's there's so many different ways you can skin the cat, and again, that's what we're here to introduce you to and here to help you with. Um, but I would say, again, just to reiterate, the very first step is to is to start by benchmarking. So if I, if you have the in-house staff to do that, I recommend you go to the link that you'll get for that um, the benchmarking toolkit, and you can start there. All right, great. Uh, so we've got a couple questions that have come in that are pretty similar. And just as a reminder, if you guys have questions, feel free to type them in, and I'll add those. Uh, but we just got one or two uh, left from what we've received so far. And again, there. A couple of these are on the same idea of how can I make the most of the data I've gathered beyond complying and um, the other one that's similar is well, where else could I use the data that I've gathered for the benchmarking compliance? Yeah, well, I, I, um, I do really think that that's, so if you've gathered it for compliance, and again, you know what your scores are, right, now you use it for improvement. Right now, that that's you actually use it to benchmark. So, um, and, and to be clear, so remember when I said you compare against your peers. So, not to get too technical into to uh, you know the the actually you know the depths of Energy Star. And by the way, if you do want to get tech, technical into it, they do have the documentation all available online. But what that score is telling you is that essentially, so, so let's just pretend you're a score of a 65. Um, so what that's saying is compared to peer buildings of similar shape and type, um, you are rated 65, okay, and, uh, you know, for efficiency, right? I'm probably not explaining this very well. <laughs> and once you get, so you're kind of in that second quartile of efficiency, right? When you get past 75, you're saying you are in that top quartile of efficiency compared to peers. You are you know, if more efficient than than 75% um, of all the other senior housing comparable communities, right? So it's that benchmarking thing. So in we're doing those things to improve that score, checking in on it monthly, right? And again, that's what um, uh, the beauty of having, you know, the, the solution like Gobi is that they just automatically grab the data from the utility and it goes in automatically monthly. And you can kind of watch over time. You know, if you do it manually, maybe you don't have the luxury of doing it monthly, but at least maybe once a quarter go in and update your information. And man, you know, especially if you've done a couple of things, you're going to start to see that score move. And that's when it gets motivating. It's very exciting when you say, okay, I was a 65. 
and now and we've implemented a few things and six months later we're actually you know a 70 um you know or a 68 and and you know and again that's what i'm talking about if you use it as an engagement tool with your residents and staff you can you can celebrate that right and you can say hey we made it to a 68 you know now what can we do to try to get to a 70 and um, so you can really use the score to help motivate and and um, and make progress, right? And the more progress you make, the more money you'll save, and the more, you know, again, the more fun you can have with it, the more social media posts you can do. And, you know, so it's really, um, you can kind of just create your little program around, um, you know, trying to get your score um, moving, right, which is sort of like the um, the catalyst for all of the other good things that happen with it. And you know, Marla, I like your point at the end. So it is fun and exciting, and social media is great in celebrating the the personnel that make it happen, and it's exciting to see the score move. But at the end of the day, as much as um, we're we're tree huggers at heart, I think we're all cold-hearted capitalists and understand that it has to make business sense, and you really need to show the ROI on these types of initiatives. And I really liked the chart right. that you put up. Um, to illustrate even just a 5% savings, which is super attainable and easy, even in year one, but but the impacts of that, you know, monetarily, I yeah, think, thanks, Chris, but um, it's, it's meaningful, it's meaningful. For doing these types of things, um, the other stuff to me is just like the frosting on the cake. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. It's a very good point. All right, I have another question here of somebody who doesn't have to comply with any sort of benchmarking ordinance is wondering if it's really worth the time to do this. Yeah, I think, you know, to all the points that we've been making, like if you can go to your organization and say, hey, look, I can save you a quarter of a million dollars over 50 communities, whether it's required or not. Um, I don't know anyone in a, a C-suite position that would say, no, thanks. Um, I think anyone would be like, yeah, that sounds great. How do we do it? So. Yeah, and the other piece of it too is again back to that, you know, so if you do take the time to do it and you come out and you're, you know, maybe you have been paying attention to this stuff, right? And you want to see how efficient you are and you take the time to do the benchmarking and maybe you, you it, it shows that you are indeed, right? Get that certification. Um, you're going to see value from that certification. And, you know, and if you're not, efficient you know again maybe you're at the other end of the scale and you have no idea right you're like i thought we were okay you know again we meet budget every month i had no idea that we would have come out as a 25 you know so there's obviously opportunity for savings here you know what can we do to make it better so again it, it, it you know think back to that metric of the of the um uh you know comparison to the fuel rating right it, it gives you knowledge is power, right? And it gives you more knowledge about your facility. And here's the other thing that I'm just going to throw out there. It's again, talk about that icing on the cake sort of thing. Um, a lot of times, again, so let's, a lot of times when you improve your energy usage, right? It means, you know, maybe your HVAC maintenance has not been what it should be. So that's a good place to start, right? So you start maintaining your system better. Um, or, you know, you have an energy audit and you see that, you know, because your score is low, so you have an audit that helps you sort of, you know, look and see where you can make improvements. You're also, the more you improve your energy, um, uh, your HVAC system, right? And get it running like it's supposed to run, it's gonna become more efficient and your your resident and staff are going to be more comfortable. Um, so it's it, it's all good, right? Yes, it's going to take a little bit of time, but the outcomes again, if you can embrace it and use the information for the power that it has, um, all of the outcomes are you know can be positive from it. Great. I've also got somebody asking about getting a copy of this webinar to share with their team and manager team members and manager and if there's other resources they can share yeah sure i think um we will send out the recording afterwards i think it's available on our website as well you can also go to gobyinc.com g-o-b-y-i-n-c.com slash benchmarking for a special section on our website that just relates to benchmarking um, and like i said marla and i always available um, call email you can even text me Cool for around health 
Um, and yeah, we'll send out the details as far as where to get the recording and all that after the webinar. All right, that's the last of the questions we have received thus ah, so far. So I'll just take a moment to thank both of our presenters, Healy and Marla, for all this really interesting information. And for those of you that uh, joined the call, uh, again, you'll get a follow-up email from us with information, follow-up, and feel free to reach out directly as well if you have additional questions that didn't get covered today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.